Friends, welcome back. We're going to talk today about correlation. Oggi parliamo della correlazione. Nessuno capisce davvero la correlazione. Nobody really knows what it is. I mean, or nobody, few people know. La correlazione è molto difficile se abbiamo la non linearità. La non linearità. And the non linearity is very difficult. So, è molto pericoloso. Il concetto è molto pericoloso. It's a very dangerous concept. A lot of people think they understand it and they don't know while well, they don't know what it means. So let's start with uh, with very simply, you know, what it means. I have x, so x1, xn, and y, y1, yn. Okay, as usual. When I tell you what is the correlation between X and Y, does it reflect the dependence? No, it does not reflect the dependence between X and Y. The way the correlation is computed, which is pretty much like the expectation of X minus the mean of X, Y minus the mean of Y over square root of variance of X variance of Y. Okay, that's uh, the measure for correlation. And that measure, as we saw with standard deviation, which is uh, the, if you got to, you know, uh, you want to really uh, <coughs> redo a lecture, look at the one on standard deviation, it's the same concept. We're, we're multiplying things, as you see. We're multiplying, say, if I normalize x by y. So basically, it's normalized x, normalized covariance. Okay, x, y, when you multiply things <laughs> visibly, you give a bigger weight to when associations are uh, large and smaller weight to the smaller ones. So same problem as we have with standard deviation, misrepresent in some cases. Now, you would think that correlation, you know, reflects dependence. I'm gonna show you a situation where below zero, y equals minus x, and above zero, y equals, sorry, y equals x and minus x here. Okay, and this is x. With no noise, 100%. You know x, you will know y. Okay. Guess what? What is the correlation? Rho x, y equals zero. What's the dependence between these two? <laughs> Huge, <laughs> okay. So uh, actually when we use a more powerful uh, metric used called uh, mutual information uh, applied to this, we see it's infinite, but as certain as things can be. So this is the first problem. The correlation, you know, it doesn't uh, reflect what you think it does reflect, dependence. Where does correlation work? In very simple models, very simple, where you have y equals uh, a intercept plus b of x, b times x plus some noise, okay? This number here, the beta, is constant. So if you draw, if you normalize, you know, then you draw this, okay, x, y, this b will be the correlation, okay? That's basically it. So, and y will be the correlation, or is everybody gonna tell me where it doesn't agree how much noise, doesn't, uh, doesn't describe how much noise, it does. Because we've normalized, normalized means use, x minus x bar over sigma x and the same for y in other words you you uh, you're scaling by the standard deviation after reducing by the mean so mean zero standard deviation of one so because as this angle becomes bigger okay the 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 noise the ratio of information to noise 
increases. And as this one becomes smaller, because the noise stays the same. That's pretty much the intuition. So correlation works when you have a linear relationship. And we're talking about Pearson correlation. The other ones actually are worse. OK. Another problem with correlation is that it's not additive. OK. Let's take x, y and generate noise with a correlation of 0.5. Rho x, y equals 0.5. What local correlation will you get in every quadrant? Say x positive, y positive. We're normalizing, OK? This is about 0 0.26, 0 0.26. This is about 0 0.16, 0 0.16. So if you add them up, whether you probabilize, you know, you give the probability in each quadrant, 38%, I think, 38%, and then 1 minus, <laughs> OK? Uh, half of the half of one minus uh, the sum, whatever you get probabilities of each, each quadrant, you weigh them, you realize correlation is sub additive in that case. So, in other words, you have a correlation of 50 overall, you'd get 0.26 in the positive quadrant, 0.26 in negative one. So, it's weird because the metric is not designed to be used outside. <laughs> A very simple narrow model and not generalized to things in real life that have nonlinearities, as we saw with that uh, with that payoff. And incidentally, that payoff like that, inverted V, is a payoff of a short straddle. So we in finance know that you cannot have correlation between options and option PNL and the market because we're based on second order terms. <laughs> uh, and and a positive V is this is long straddle, same thing. It's not correlated to the market, <laughs> but it depends 100%. On the market, so uh, you can't do really partial correlation, but, and and of course you understand now why IQ studies are generally uh, complete, either complete BS or uh, partial BS. You know, complete BS in the sense uh, that you, you can't use them for any information, or partial BS. Sometimes you can use them in the negative domain, because as you see. <laughs> Let's say I have IQ, an IQ metric that works. This is performance. This is IQ and doesn't work in a positive domain. You have nonlinearities. If you have nonlinearity, the row is uninformative. Uh, there are a lot, of, they make incidentally a lot of mistakes in, in the IQ. I'll do that in a more complicated, more, more technical lecture. This is meant to be non technical. But let me, Explain another thing that they may they use proxy for correlation that A correlates to B and B correlates to C. It doesn't mean that A correlates to C. And if it does, it does it's not the same, you know, if, if this can be 0.8, it can be 0.8, it doesn't mean it's going to be 0.8. So, because you have cross terms. This we learn as option traders when we start doing correlation trades. Correlation triangles, see my book Dynamic Hedging. Now, quickly, I'm going to show you the problem with correlation is that in the mind of people, okay, so you say it has a correlation 0 0.25, 0 0.5. You have the feeling that a correlation of 0.25 is half of the correlation between 0 and 0.5. It's not. Of course, it's going to be a correlation of 0.25 is much closer to zero, which just tells you that correlation of 0 0.1, 0 0.5, even 0.25 has no information in it. Okay, it looks good, but it doesn't have any information. And I'm going to show you how visually you can capture this uh, point <laughs> next. Okay, so now let's look at what a correlation means a numerical number implies as far as uh, the, the, the real information. And, and you can see information with the naked eye. 
as a bunch of researchers figure out that economists couldn't interpret their own numbers. <laughs> but when you show them graphs, they can interpret the implication of the graph. I mean, economists mean normal. That's people understand with their eyes things a lot better than when you give them metrics uh, that they, you know, they don't even know how how these metrics were derived. So I'm showing here x as random variable, y is the same random variable as before. We generate by Monte Carlo, and let me redo it in front of you, a uh, you know a joint uh, x y you know points. So you put them two dimensional space. And look at here, correlation is zero, pretty much. Things are spread. You have more concentration in the middle because it's a Gaussian. And incidentally, forgot to mention, multivariate Gaussian rho is zero. So uh, you go to a correlation of half, not much better than zero. <laughs> not much better. So if I showed them to you separately, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, be able to tell which one's which. Uh, point 0.8, not much different from one half. OK. so. Maybe you need to square. If we square, it doesn't get much better. It doesn't get better at all. Look, uh, zero, the distance between three quarters and one. Incidentally, you can't have a correlation of one in a multivariate Gaussian, it blows up. So use, you know, approximate one. Uh, three quarters is a lot closer to zero than it is to one. One and only one measure can fix the problem, mutual information. And to go back to my roots as a trader, it really tells you mutual information as an entropy-based measure, very, very connected to the Kelly criterion because it's based on logs, which tells you how much will you willing to bet on Y knowing X, how many dollars? So if you have certainty, of course, you can bet of all you can. If you have uh, uh, some degree of uncertainty, you bet less, okay, and, and so on. And, and pretty much how much you bet is a distance. And that works beautifully for genetics, much better than correlation. For a Gaussian, there's a map one-to-one. -one. That metric is called mutual information. And you can see here, mutual information is in green how it rises in uh, how, how mutual information rises. So in other words, you see the nonlinearity. So 0.5, okay, is uh, a lot closer to zero than it is to 0 0.1, uh, 0.25, a lot closer to zero than it is to 0.5, and so on. And you can see it with a green line. Uh, I cheated to eliminate infinities. so. No, you can you can play with it, but just just as a concept, it gives you a notion of relative uh, information content that you're getting via the metric, uh, the uh, corresponding to uh, uh, correlation. So, the, the, for a Gaussian, as I said, it's a simple formula: a log of uh, a minus one half log of uh, one minus rho square. But for non-Gaussian it is, uh, you have to recompute it uh, one by one. So I think uh, I'm done with this lecture on correlation. Remember one thing that uh, correlation doesn't mean anything unless you've seen a graph. Uh, do not trust social scientists dealing with correlation. Only trust people who have derived it or derived some metric to describe an association. And, and other metrics, scandal, and all these uh, derivatives uh, metrics uh, from the Pearson original one, uh, original cross-moment correlation, all the other ones actually give you worse information. So uh, thank you and have a good day.